The Chris Stegall Show. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. Yeah, I think you've set a, a new bar today for being contentious with the press corps, kind of calling us losers to our faces and all that. Is no, this no, not all of you, just many of you. All right, fine. En- enough of us. Is, is this what not you did? Is it? Is this what it's going to be like covering yeah, you with your president? Yeah, it is. is let, let me we're going to have this kind I'm of confrontation in the press room. Okay, yeah, it is going to be like this, David. Well, there are a couple of different ways to look at that press conference yesterday. Satisfying and highly entertaining. Some of you tweeting at me that you're disturbed by the tone. You don't like this stuff, that it's the press. I, the press certainly doesn't. The press, they're all in a snit today. It's our job. It's our right in the free press to ask questions. You don't have the right to get angry at us about it. When you're talking about suing journalists for doing their job, He's not, he's not saying that we're, 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 we're getting the story wrong. We're actually doing our job. Asking questions about where this money went, that's the job of the press. He actually said in this press conference today, I wish you'd just say thank you. Thank me for, that's not the role of the media, to thank the, the, the presidential nominee for raising money. It's not the job of the media to heap praise upon him. So I just think he's fundamentally very confused about the role of free press. And if we're going to have an impact on the freedom of press around the world, we have to take ours very serious. That's S.E. Cup's take on it. Um, I asked a very simple question on Twitter. From, from the media's perspective, I say, what is it you want? Do you want access? Or would you prefer no access? Because, I mean, the, the press's complaint of the Obama administration is there no access. Total lack of access. He doesn't need them. Now, Trump seems to relish the access and being right there in front of him, but he, he calls him out and calls him names and all that stuff. So I, which would they rather have, I think would be my question. You know who would be great to bring in on such a matter? A woman named Nellie Galan. Now, she is the youngest in history, the youngest TV station manager in the country. She was 22 years old. She went on to become the first female president of Telemundo. She also happens, Paige, to have been a guest, a contestant on season one of Donald Trump's ah, Apprentice. Ah, very nice. How about that? And huh. she's got a book, Self-Made, Becoming Empowered, Self-Reliant, and Rich in Every Way. Just went on sale. Uh, Miss Galan, it's a pleasure to talk with you this morning. Thanks for your ma- making uh, time for us. So happy to be here with you. I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you. Well, uh, this is a look, you come at this from a number of different perspectives. I'm actually <laughs> glad this press conference happened yesterday because it's perfect to talk with a woman who was in the television news business for a long time. Yeah, and, I've been, yeah. And so I'll, or, or, and still are, I guess, to an extent. Um, so let me ask you first, as a, a journalist, mm-hmm. is access to the president more important than the way the journalist is treated versus, say, a president that says, I'm not talking to this network or that newspaper or whatever. I'm not I'm just going to ignore you altogether. Which would you rather have the access or the the uh, kind treatment? Well, I don't I, I don't know about kind treatment. I think access is the most important thing, because I think I come from a communist regime where you have no access to. Um, you know, the pres- the, the, the dictator, <laughs> whatever. And I, so to me, freedom of speech and access and all of those things are very important. That's Cuba, I should mention, by the that's way. That's Cuba. I'm from <laughs> Cuba. I'm an immigrant. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, however, I also think, I don't, I, I don't think they're, it's not that people need to be treated nicely. I think people need to be treated respectfully um, because I think they're both positions of respect. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in this country right now, Chris. We could, we could, <laughs> talk for days about all of this. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think there's something to be said for messaging and the message people get about things. And I know that we, you know, there's a lot of political correctness in the world and sometimes it's too much, but there's also something to be said about treating people respectfully in class. And I think that's also important. You, uh, again, this is interesting because you, you had sort of worked, I guess, if you want to say worked alongside Trump for a little bit in terms of the show, The, the Apprentice, right? Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I was on the first season of Celebrity Apprentice, and, um, you know, I, I tell everybody it was a really fun experience. I mean, it, it's a TV show, so it's not real life. Um, it was super, super fun. I was with Gene Simmons and a lot of other people, and we were there to raise money for charity. Um, and it was very contentious, and we would fight a lot, and, you know, but it's it's all in good fun for ratings. And, 
And I was re- I really thought that that was um, that Donald Trump had mastered that incredible act of being the Simon Cowell, if you will, of, of, of business. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, I really never thought that it, that it was going to turn into a political platform, uh-huh. to be honest with you. And, and hasn't he parlayed? That show business component, and it seems to me, I've been, frankly, pretty critical of, of Fox News, and mm-hmm. not, not not just because they're pro-Trump, but they seem to be all Trump. Yeah. And it, it's like squeezing him until every last drop is out of him. I don't know if that plateaus or, or if it ever does. I, there, it is, he is a bona fide ratings smash for these networks, is. it's clear. He is. Yeah. And I think that's the, pro- that's the bigger problem that we're not talking about. I think the bigger problem is that if we make news, which it, it has become a big money source for networks, right? And so the, 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 the raison d'etre for having anyone on a show is now ratings and not journalism, then you have a problem because you're right. It's 24 hours, whatever is going to get you the most ratings. And I tell you that having come out with a book right now that's about something that's goodness, it's about women and entrepreneurship uh, and about good information about what's going on in our country regarding entrepreneurship, which is all about people, uh, you know, making their own money and not depending on the government. Um, It's hard to even talk about it because everyone wants to talk about Trump. So be honest with me if you can, and I I trust that you will. Nelly Galana is with us, by the way. Her book is Self-Made, Becoming Empowered, Self-Reliant, and Rich in Every Way. You're a television executive. Uh, And I'm an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur. I've been in TV business for many, many years. And you have your political points of view, too. I do. Uh, um, And I, from what I read and understand, and again, I'm not here to really debate this with you one way or the other, but you're not, you don't find yourself to be supportive of Trump for president at this time, right? Well, I think I think it's very, as a woman, as someone who, again, who is uh, an immigrant, someone who is an entrepreneur, and someone who has really just wrote a book about the incredible things that are going on with women, entrepreneurship, and with diverse women who are rising up and, and are the growth engine in this country, I think the messaging that he's got going on with us is not working for us. But the, okay, talk to me, and, though. And, you know, here is... I am, I'm, I mean, look, I, I'm a woman who sure. is very conservative in so many ways, I'm very traditional. I'm all about entrepreneurship and making your own money. I tell the women in the book, go get your own chips. Don't <laughs> depend on the government. Don't depend on corporations. Do it yourself. It doesn't get more conservative than that. And yet, I'm, I'm a mixed metaphor, if you will, because I'm a Latina. Mm-hmm. I'm an immigrant. And I want uh, diverse people to succeed in this country. And I choose to lift them up. I choose to talk about what are the things that are going on in this country right now where diverse people are winning and that we can follow their lead. And one of them is in the digital age, they've hit it, the women have hit it out of the park in entrepreneurship. And so I feel like he has not done that. And I think, you know, Fortunately or, or, or unfortunately for him, because I think you have another candidate who has had a history with women and helping women. Uh, that being uh, who? Hillary? Hillary Clinton. Oh, well, I mean, you could. I argue. know, tough. Her husband certainly hasn't. Well, you know, but we're not, we're not, um, we're not hiring her husband. And I think that we also all have to remember that the presidency is a job. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, I'm I'm very dictatorial. Uh, you know, I run my company the way I want. Mr. Trump is is an entrepreneur. He's excellent at running his own company, even though, you know, he's had his issues. But he's he's definitely in charge. The presidency of the United States is a job in service of others. And you know, I myself, you know, would I I would never run for office because I want to run my own thing my own way. Well, and that's the thing. Here's here's my question. I, I, this uh, politics aside for a second, you as the leader of Telemundo, all yeah. right, or say the, oh. the leader of any network, you would, I presume, set your personal politics aside if Trump were willing to come on Telemundo any day of the week to debate or discuss or have a forum or do a. Well, you have whatever, to, as, right? as I mean, it's, as he says, you know, as the, as the, didn't he say, as the, as the president of my own company, I, you know, I, I gave money to the Clintons, I did everything. Yeah, I think we all have our own, um, you know, as business people, we work with everyone, and I. And, I but isn't that interesting? I mean, is, that's that's what I think. We should respect the president. 
president. Yeah, but I, I think that's what's so interesting about Trump. Is, uh, look, I'm a conservative, and I don't actually think Trump's very conservative at all. I mean, I'm not, I, I'd be the last guy to sit here and tell you I'm shaking my pom-poms for the guy. <laughs> I intend to vote for him, but I don't think he's a conservative by any stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, there is this phenomenon with him that's different than anybody I've ever known uh, in that, he, yeah, he's running as a Republican. Whether he's a conservative or not, I think it's debatable. But he is unquestionably good for the media business, and they're all suckling at that Trump... Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's, uh, funnel, course, my if you point will. Is, Chris, is that the job of the president is to make money for, <laughs> for the networks? I, I mean, again, I think, look, we're all very confused by this election because it is a game changer. But you have to remember, you know, again, if, if any of us that are in the media run for office, we'd have an advantage over other people because we know how to be on TV. We know how to be in the media. Um, but that's not necessarily what's, you know, there's something to be said, and I'm not saying that politicians, the way that they, you know, the, the, what's happened to politicians is also, you know, not good. I think the one thing that's been great about this election is it's kind of opened up the floodgates to what is really going on. But I think, you know, there's something to be said for decorum and for, you know, there's something to be said for the elegance of treating people a certain way from the point of view of someone who's leading something. For instance, let me give you an example. It's very different when I was the president of Telemundo working for a corporation. I had to behave differently than when I'm running my own production company. You know, if, if, something, if I don't like something in my production company, I can, you know, I can do whatever I want. I can fire whoever I want. It doesn't mean that, that I may not reap the consequences of firing the wrong person. Or do, I still have to follow rules, you yeah. know. But in a corporation, you, you have to follow stricter rules. You're guided by the voice of that corporation. So that's why people that are entrepreneurs are not always the best people. I don't always, um, you know, immediately like an entrepreneur in a political job because I go, I know me as an entrepreneur, and we are dictatorial, and that's okay in your own company. But when I ran Telemundo and I was an employee, I had to behave differently, and, and honestly, it was not my 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 best suit because I like working for myself. Well, here's the thing: I think no matter what's coming here of these two people, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, I think the American people know exactly who they are. They do. And that, I don't think, can be debated. I mean, we That's know, a very good point. We know who these two are, so right. we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But, Ms. Galan, thanks for your time. Your book is Self-Made, Becoming Empowered, Self-Reliant, and Rich in Every Way. Appreciate yes, it, as I'm always. and teaching women how to do it and where to find the hidden money in America. Thanks again. Okay, thanks, Chris. The Chris Segal Show. Talk Radio 1210. WPHD.